up and welcome to the video my name is Charles and if you're struggling to lose weight on a plant-based diet then this video is for you I have lost 40 pounds no I haven't yeah I have 40 pounds I was like I haven't lost that much but I actually have and I've been able to keep it off for about four years now after struggling with my diet and not really being able to lose weight even as a healthy vegan for most of my life like decades of trying to lose weight. And one of the things that's been so helpful to help me to maintain my weight loss and also get to those 40 pounds down is to create a meal prep system that is fail proof and so incredibly easy and simple. So that's what we're gonna do in the video. So for starters, let's go over why traditional meal plans are so terrible for your consistency and why they pretty much always fail. And the first reason is actually counterintuitive and that is that there's too much variety and not enough repetition. Now, we all think that we want more variety in our diets and that boredom is the main reason that we don't stay consistent, but that's not actually true. What happens in a typical meal plan is you have to cook a new thing every day. Sometimes it's a different breakfast every day. And I want you to put in the comments how many times you've actually stuck to some kind of meal plan. I know that I've never kept that up longer than a week and I have never met a single person that has stayed consistent with a set meal plan longer than a few days or a week at most. Let me know if you are the exception to this because I'd love to hear. And variety sounds great in theory and we like the idea of it, but when we're actually trying to create something new on a daily basis, then we never give ourselves the opportunity to make those habits autopilot because we're never putting in enough repetition. Think about this as compared to something like learning to read. If you had to go and look at a new alphabet and a new language, every time you would learning to read, you probably would not be literate right now. Because it's through repetition of us looking at those words, looking at those letters, and seeing those patterns thousands of times that we then can actually learn to sight read. And you don't even have to sound out a word anymore, which is pretty amazing when you think about it because your brain has created some consistent pathways. So when you don't have repetition in your diet, your brain is having to work extremely hard and even though it might feel like that's exciting, the amount of effort that you have to put in to look at what those ingredients are, try and work out how you're going to cook that recipe, create something that maybe you don't have all the necessary ingredients for and then you've got to go and think about planning to to get them all and have them all in your fridge for that week something that you don't know how long it's going to cook or how it's going to taste when you have that problem on a daily basis as exciting as that may be it is outweighed by how much effort you feel like that is going to be it cancels out any benefit that you have of that being interesting and there being variety there and then you've most likely experienced that horrible feeling of decision fatigue where even though you know what to do and that's all laid out in front of you it's just easier to go and get takeout because it's too much effort to do something that you're not used to doing and this can be exactly the same problem when you don't know what to cook each night and then you look on pinterest or your millions of recipes or you buy another recipe ebook and it's all really exciting to begin with and there's lots of variety and options but again, you don't actually follow through on that because the perceived effort and all the decisions that you have to make are just too highly stacked so that you don't actually do that. And that always feels difficult. So when you don't have much repetition and you're constantly doing these new things or trying to follow a meal plan, that's really difficult on the micro level because you've got to make too many decisions when you actually go to cook. But then it's also harder on the macro level because again, too many decisions and not enough repetition so that it always feels difficult. You've got to decide what am I going to be making this week? Uh, am I going to have the right ingredients? What happens if I don't have that ingredient in my country or in my fridge when I go to cook this recipe? Then what? What do I, what do, I do? Shopping becomes this huge ordeal and then looking at what you need to actually make for the week, especially if someone who's written that is not in the same country as you. And then you can't find that necessary ingredient that feels like it was sourced at the top of a mountain during the full moon. I think you get the idea. So to contrast this, 
the way that our brain makes day-to-day -day activities easy for us is that it creates habits through that repetition. It's the reason that you don't probably need much willpower or thought process to brush your teeth or put your seatbelt on because you've now done that thousands of times. So the number one way for things to become easy is for you to do them enough times with enough consistency and enough repetition that now your brain has formed a habit. Yay! So the way to do this with your eating is to create a system that is very simple and does have a lot of repetition. And you will be shocked at how much freedom, even if you are someone who likes variety, something like this is going to give you mentally. All right, so let's get into what that looks like. So the first thing to do is to create some kind of consistent breakfast and then not worry about variety in that until you get bored of it and then swap it out for something else or change up a couple of components without having to change the whole thing. So for example, at the moment, I'm loving having oats with frozen cherries, a tiny bit of soy or oat yogurt and then some oat milk and some flax. I love this at the moment and I'm able to eat this every single day and it only takes me about five minutes to make in the morning. And when I don't want to eat that, I have whole periods of eating sweet potato toast or potato toast where I'm literally, I've got my sweet potato cooked up, I'm squishing it into a toast kind of mold and then I'm cooking it in my air fryer and putting on my normal kind of toppings like avocado, marmite because I'm a weird New Zealander slash my mum was Australian and then I just do that every single day like clockwork. I've got a ton of oat recipes so if you want one you can watch this video next for about five varieties of overnight oats. Literally all you're gonna need for the rest of your life. Don't make this more complicated than it needs to be. Most people have been eating toast and cereal their entire lives. We need a lot less variety than we're telling ourselves that we need. Moving along to lunch and dinner, one of the easiest things is to get consistent eating component bowls. Now all you need to do here is cook up your core starches, things like sweet potato or rice or chickpeas, I like edamame, and cooking up steamed potatoes every few days. Uh, I love to cook up kumra or sweet potato in the oven when it's in season or when I can uh, get that, when I'm enjoying it and I alternate between what I'm enjoying. At the moment I like potatoes more than sweet potato. I'm not trying to do both at the same time. And so that food, those starches, that kind of core part of my meals and how I'm going to build my meals is already in my fridge because I'm consistently prepping that out. And then I also have a backup plan where I've got some packet rice. If you're in America and you can get to Whole Foods, Whole Foods has frozen rice which is flipping amazing. Tins of chickpeas, tins of beans, so that you can throw together some kind of meal very, very quickly when you have that component. Because your starchy kind of components, your beans, your legumes, your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, your rice, your quinoa, those are the things that take the longest to cook. So a simple prep system where you're cooking these up on a three times a week basis, or you've got them in the fridge, or you've got them in the freezer or the cupboard ready to go, that's gonna mean that you can throw together a meal in about five minutes flat when you've got some veggies and you've got some a fat sauce and some condiments that you enjoy because now you're just throwing things together into a big bowl. And I've done a full video on how to create component meals that are optimized for fat loss. I call it the HATS framework. And if you wanna learn how to do that, then go check out this video next. It's gonna show you exactly how to do that. But when it comes to creating component bowls, you don't need a lot of variety here either. Because again, you want to put in your reps. So you've just got to find something that you enjoy and then rotate those out. So for me, at the moment, I'm loving my potato. I cook it up, I steam it up every couple of days. I'm putting in the air fryer with some garlic salt. I've got my edamame that I cook up every couple of days at the same time. And then I'm chucking that in with some green beans or some broccoli, some Creole seasoning and a little bit of avocado. I also love sushi bowls. So when I've got those veggies ready in my fridge and they're already prepared. See, 
one of the keys here is to buy as many prepared ingredients as possible, as much frozen as possible. Eliminate as many steps from your prep as you possibly can so that you've got less bottlenecks to actually doing your reps so that this can become habit. So that it doesn't feel hard. You want it to feel light and easy so that you actually do it, right? Because if it's difficult, you won't do it. We've all been there. So if you've got some coleslaw mix and you've got some pre-cut up broccoli that all you have to do is put into a steamer and put into the microwave and you've got some frozen rice ready to go or you've cooked up your rice every couple of days and that's there waiting for you you can throw together a component sushi bowl really quick by just adding the components that you want and i'll put in rice and broccoli and my coleslaw mix and a little bit of avocado some soy sauce a little bit of seaweed it's all ready to go and maybe a little bit of ginger and then I've got a meal that I enjoy that literally did take five minutes to put together because my starches were already prepped and my veggies were already there ready to go. I also love just throwing together a salad with some kind of starchy component and then all of those veggies that I've got already prepped in the fridge and I didn't have to prep them or they're already ready to go. And then I'm just shoving that along in that hats framework with some condiments that I like, a little bit of fat with some avocado or some hummus that has tahini in it, and I can throw together a delicious salad bowl extremely quickly because I'm not bottlenecked by the fact that I have to cook up potatoes from scratch. And then the variety in this is that I'm not having to make up a whole new meal or follow a meal plan or find a recipe. I'm just getting variety in that my veggies are gonna be different depending on the season. I might put different condiments on depending on what I'm feeling. I might put a different dressing depending on what I'm feeling and my starch could be different so already a lot of variety but I'm focusing more on a three meal kind of framework with slight variation instead of having to cook up a whole new thing or decide what that's going to be every time I come to eat and then if you are going to be cooking some kind of recipe and you don't want to just eat component bowls which you can like you literally can there's so many varieties of them and even in that, there's three right there, which are amazing. If you want to cook a recipe, then choose a limited number. And I've done a whole video on this as well, which was my prep system and how I got back on track after going to the States uh, and losing the weight that I, I gained there by eating a ton of burgers and milkshakes and <laughs> all the good fare that was available to me. And it, it's really as simple as choosing three maybe max four recipes that you enjoy that when you come to cook you're just looking at that list all right what are my core four recipes i like risotto i adore risotto and again a framework of risotto that i've done tons of recipes for I like i think i've done one I, I can swap out the mushrooms for leeks if i have them i can swap out the broccoli for Carrot, if I don't have that, I can swap out peas for edamame. I'm still using that and I've got variety in that, but that's something that I cook up literally twice a week because I love and I can use the leftovers and my kids will eat it, but I haven't, I don't have to cook something new every week, right? I know I like risotto. Who doesn't? Another one that I love is soups. I can easily swap out what I'm using in that depending on what the season is. But I, when I look at my list of my four recipes and I see soup, I'm like, do I feel like soup tonight? Okay, yep, I don't feel like risotto. I'm gonna make my soup and I'm gonna use what's in my pantry and my fridge to make that. Frameworks rather than exact recipes. I've also got a stir fry that I love. And if you've got your frozen rice, imagine how much easier this is gonna be. And I'm literally putting in frozen veggies some tofu, some plum sauce, and some soy sauce. And I eat this two times a week, and I throff over it every single time because it is that good. And then pasta, I th I'd say I cook pasta twice a week as well. And again, I can swap out the ingredients in that depending on what veggies are available, and it's delicious every time. So, choose your four core meals, your recipes, make up component bowls, Start prepping your starches on a consistent basis. Choose a consistent breakfast, and that's kind of all you need. And when it comes to snacks, first of all, if you're eating big enough meals, you probably won't need to snack. And if you're eating enough starches, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, beans, all of that on your meals, again, you should reduce your need for snacking. But if you do need to snack, ideal things are fruit, or non-starchy vegetables, or potatoes. Done. Easy.
Next. This is the system I use. I've seen it help hundreds of other people in my program Lean of Plants as well and help people lose anywhere from 10 to 60 pounds. And the real magic of this is not what you eat and what meals they are because people constantly ask me for a recipe book which you don't need you don't need another recipe book the magic here is that you're just keeping it simple and then you're allowing yourself to do something enough times that then your brain is forming new pathways so that when you get a craving when you get home late and the kids are screaming and they're tugging on you and saying like hey let's get pizza when you've had a stressful day at work and your husband is being annoying or whatever it is you're on your period you've done something enough times with enough repetition that now your brain goes we're going to make potatoes and broccoli we're going to make a sushi bowl or i'm going to make risotto really quickly instead of picking up the phone and ordering dominoes you know i'm always going to talk about dominoes because we have vegan dominoes in new zealand so on a conceptual level to bring this all together your main goal here is to remove decision fatigue by removing obstacles, by removing choices, so that you can have the freedom of creating repetition so that then those things become autopilot. This is why simplicity wins and complexity is always a recipe for disaster and us feeling like we're a failure when we're not. It was just a system that was too hard and complicated and had too many steps and too many decisions to make. If you want to make this really practical right now and actually start to see the benefits of it, put in the comments what's your breakfast going to be? what starches you're going to be cooking up, and then when you're going to make them. And if you want to tell me what your core meals are going to be, your core recipes, then I would love to hear that as well. Let's spend way less time trying to make decisions about all the things that we could do, and more time acting so that we can actually get those results that only come through really doing the thing. I hope you found this video helpful, and I would recommend you watch this video next, all about how to create those component meals using those hat, that hat framework so you can throw things together quickly and you know they're optimized for weight loss and they also taste flippin' amazing. Go give that a listen, a watch, whatever, and hit the like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Do what you want to do and I will see you next week for another video. All right, that's it.